Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be partying together a $1,500 gaming PC. This might be one of the best mini ITX PCs you can build right now, and it's brought to you by our good friends over at Dark Flash. They sent over their brand new DLH21 case and their liquid cooler, the Twister, so we can make a really nice looking mini ITX gaming PC. We've worked with Dark Flash for quite a while. They sell some really awesome RGB products, some really cool cooling products, and honestly, their cases are some of the best cases for the price. And we're excited about this case because it's kind of a different type of theme that's came around recently where it's kind of tall, but it's mini ITX and it's very compact. It's kind of complicated. You'll see it once we actually build it. So let's not waste any more time and just dive into the parts of this PC build. So you guys probably are not new to this processor. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. It's a six core 12 threaded. It's basically the successor to the Ryzen 3600, but you get a really big performance increase with this one because AMD just works some magic in there. And for gaming, if you pair it, especially with an AMD RX card, you're supposed to be able to get some of like the absolute best gaming performance out there. Mwah. Now to cool that 5600X, we have the Dark Flash Twister ARGB. That's a really fun name. But this is a white AIO because it is going inside of a white case. We don't do a lot of white builds in here, but we have two RGB fans. We have a really nice RGB logo on the actual water block, and it's a 240mm cooler. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's Dark Flash who sent it, so it better fit in this case, Dark Flash, or else we're coming for you. Now, of course, we did have to spend a little bit of extra money on this portion of the build. This is an Aurorus B550i Aurorus Pro AX motherboard. So the reason you have to spend extra on these boards is because it's mini ITX. It's very small and compact. It's gonna be really cute when we actually get it out of the case, but they're usually about six by six inches. So it's a really small board, but it's the only thing that'll fit in this case. And another thing that makes this case really unique that Matt will be talking about is you do have to get a small form factor power supply. Those can be really hard to find and really expensive. However, we got a decent deal on this one. Long story short though, this is a really good board. Any gigabyte Aurora board is going to be good, so. Now it's been a while since we've gotten used to some of the fast high speed RAM, but this is 16 gigs, 3600 megahertz, CL18 two by eight PNY Accelerate Gaming RAM. It's RGB too. RGB is actually really expensive now um, on RAM and also high speeds really expensive. It seems to be like 3000 to 3200 is all you can ever really find in stock unless you wanna spend some really big bucks. So make sure you check and see if this stuff right here is in stock. Special thanks to AMD for sending over this Radeon 6700 XT. Yeah, you guys at home probably can't buy this thing right now, but hopefully you can at some point. We did not do any launch day coverage of this thing, but we had this build planned and we thought this is a perfect candidate to be paired with the Ryzen 5 5600X. Really awesome car for the money. We're gonna see how it performs in gaming here very shortly. Now for storage, we went a little bit crazy with this, but here's another PNY product. This is their Accelerate Gaming Drive, more specifically the CS3040 SSD. This is a Gen 4 SSD. You don't really need Gen 4 speed unless you're doing a lot of like video editing and stuff. It's kind of just a extra bonus, but because we had it on hand, we want to use it in this build and what we can't complain about having some really awesome speeds. Now Jackson mentioned that you do need a small form factor power supply for this PC build. The one we have right here is the FSP Dagger Pro 650 watt power supply. Now we did pay around $110 for it, which for a small form factor power supply is actually a pretty good price. Again, mini ITX builds are just a wee bit more expensive than a normal PC build. So just know you're paying a premium for that small form factor, but this is 80 plus gold. And from a company like FSP that we worked with before, I'm really happy to use this power supply. And last but certainly not least is the DLH21 from Dark Flash. This is the white version. It does come in a bunch of different colors, just like all the other cases. You can get black, white, pink, or neo mint, which is another color that Dark Flash offers. I don't really see that very often, but this is a nice case, simple, modern, stylish performance. It's what it says right there, but we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to put this thing together and show you how beautiful this PC build can be inside the DLH21.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this gaming PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about some benchmarks real quick. Now, we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Call of Duty Cold War, Fortnite, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Valheim. We tested all these games at 1440p, and the main reason why we did that was because the 6700 XT is being advertised as a 1440p gaming card, so you know what? Gotta test it at its resolution. So first up with Call of Duty Cold War on high settings at 1440p, we got well over 100 plus FPS. The 6700 XT is a pretty good GPU. It does slot in right between the 3060 Ti and 3070 in terms of price, but I do think it competes more with like the 3060 Ti. And from all the benchmarks I've seen from all the bigger tech tubers out there, that does seem to line up. I really do think AMD might need to slot this card a little bit lower on the price tier, but in all honesty, why would they even do that right now? Because I doubt anyone can actually pick this card up for MSRP. That's something they can deal with later down the line when supply gets better. Now one thing to keep in mind with this mini ITX case and most mini ITX builds, especially super compact ones, temperatures can be a problem. And with this case, it's not bad, but the GPU definitely runs a little bit hot, sometimes into the mid 80s, depending on the game you're playing, but normally around 80 degrees Celsius, which isn't awful because the average temperature for this GPU, especially the reference model from AMD, is in the 70s in a well ventilated case. So a 10 degree difference isn't gonna hurt things, but do keep in mind it is gonna run a little bit hotter than your average PC build. Next up in Fortnite on Pro settings at 1440p once again, we got well over 200 FPS. Fortnite is an esports title that really shows how well the Ryzen 5 5600X can perform, especially with that 3600 MHz RAM that we have installed and enabled. Things are really nice, we get some really high FPS numbers, and even at 1440p getting well over 200 plus FPS, sometimes into the 400s, is very impressive. I absolutely love the 5600X right now, and it's becoming easier to get so if you are building a new gaming rig definitely consider picking this CPU up. The next game we tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and on the highest preset using the built-in benchmark tool, we averaged 104 FPS. This is our AAA benchmark of choice. If you guys have any suggestions for new AAA benchmarks, let me know in the comment section down below. We're looking to update our list as we move into our new office and just want to change things up a little bit. But Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a really demanding game, and getting over 100 FPS at 1440p is no easy task. This PC is more than capable of playing games like Cyberpunk and the latest AAA titles out there that you would want to play at well over 60 FPS at 1440p. And last but certainly not least is a game I've been having fun testing and that is Valheim. And on max settings at 1440p, we got around 70 plus FPS. This game definitely could utilize the GPU more and get some better numbers, but with optimizations, those things may change. But this game is a lot of fun. If you guys haven't played this, definitely consider checking it out. Uh, it's one of my favorites recently. I've been playing it a lot of my downtime, so I highly suggest you give it a shot. But overall, this PC for the money is pretty good. Yeah, there are some compromises with the Mini ITX form factor, but the DLH21 from Dark Flash is a really sleek looking Mini ITX case, and I'm very happy they gave us the opportunity to do a PC build with it, because I think it is one that a lot of people are going to want to pick up once they know more about it. So now that we finished the benchmarking section of today's video, how about we bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. Okay, so as you guys probably expected with a build this pricey, it plays games really well. It's gonna handle AAA titles perfectly. And of course, your lower end games, you're gonna be able to get likely over 240 FPS. So, hey, 240 Hertz is an option for you. This case from Dark Flash, the DLH240, is a really awesome case. It was kind of difficult to build it, I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of stuff involved in building a case that's this compact. We did end up using the fans on the outside as opposed to the normal directions that have the fan go on the inside. But we do think it looks a little better because you can actually see the RGB fans uh, on the outside of the case just to add a little bit of extra look to it. But uh, yeah, the RGB glow underneath it looks really nice. And I think in terms of performance, this thing is gonna do very well for you if you look to build this 
for your next PC build. Another thing that's cool about this case is it's really nice to get to everything. You have your actual ports up here. So you have two USB 2s, USB-C, and an audio jack. And then if you go inside of here, which will have some B-roll of I'm sure, if you look in the back, you can actually see the whole entire rear I.O. shield, which is technically up top with it. So there's just this tiny little hole in the back where you can route all of your things that you're not going to be disconnecting. So for the front, you know, you can use your SD card readers, your USB thumb drives, you have your audio jack to disconnect it when you need to, and then you run your permanent stuff up top here. So overall, very happy we got the chance to build in this case. If you want to purchase this case or any of the parts in today's video, link in the description down below. Jack is trying to readjust the yes. panel right there. Uh, but yeah, they are affiliate links and they do help us out. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Hey, did you guys know that we stream over on Twitch, which I just said a few seconds ago, but we also give things away. We give away uh, one to two computers a month and they are not just small, simple computers. We're giving away computers like this one. So make sure you follow or subscribe on Twitch. You pretty much said everything I wanted to say. So that's it. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, I don't know if you had anything.